Welcome to episode three of the Aluminium Podcast, Apple News with a British accent, where every week I'll be joined by a different guest from the world of tech and beyond, bringing you the latest Apple news and wider technology news, as well as insight into our guests and their stories in technology. And for episode three, I'm delighted to welcome, it's John Prosser, everybody. Yay! I almost hit my soundboard to make the sound the music go off between the I'm, I'm just going to do it afterwards. You, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, me. Thank you for having me. I, I, this, I know this is the third episode of your show because I watch your show, I watch your channel. So it's it's going to be real trippy to see me uh, in a video that's actually released. Super early, isn't it? And not the first time we've talked uh, online no. as well. You came on I for wish. the IKversary, <laughs> which was great. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, if you've if you've watched the previous ones, you will know that the first thing that we do is getting to know you because there's probably three or four people that watch my channel that don't watch your channel already. Um, so first question, Xbox or PlayStation? Oh, PS5 for sure. Okay. I have to answer specifically because of different er- eras, it's been a different answer, but right now it's PS5. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. And feel free to go in a different direction if any of these apply in that way. I, I feel <laughs> like we might be I safe on this I love this, dude. Time. We're right into it. This is the best interview ever so far oh, already. Yeah, we, 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 are, we are going, and then we'll just go off on tangents later. That's fine. I love it. Um, Windows or Mac? <laughs> I mean... Yeah, are you gonna make me Mac? Of course, and I felt it's not like even it close. Like not even in the same. Yeah, no but chance. I am gonna grill you on that in a minute. So oh hold, boy, hold fire. Uh, Android or iOS? I feel like again, iOS, a, of course, a safe one right now, but yeah. not necessarily in your history. That has def- yeah, that has definitely been a different answer at certain parts of my uh, career. Yeah, but right now it's iOS. Uh, tea or coffee? Coffee for mm-hmm. sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love coffee. Yeah. Good. That is the correct answer. Saran got as it wrong I've, last week. As I've been week. getting older, though, I've been dabbling in tea. Mm-hmm. I've been dabbling. Mm-hmm. I think was... I think it must be when you turn 30. It's like that. it's tea time. <laughs> I, I remember turning 30. That was not recently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm into the 40s now. I'm super what, old. What happens after 40? I'm afraid If tea happens after your 30, what happens after your 40? Um, just mainly blankets and hot water bottles. <laughs> like, That's hey, what I'm, the... I'm a... I'll write that down, save it for later. I'll be ready. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I, I guess the last one on here is YouTube or podcast. So like when you're active, oh. like actively YouTubing or, or podcast while you work on stuff. That's tough. Mm. That's really tough. Uh, can you be more specific? Like no, I'm, no. I'm working on something? Uh, no, not if you're around the house. Like it, do you, do you it's have YouTube be a podcast. carrying around? Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a podcast. I am a huge fan of long form content. That's the best type of content I think there is. It just really, it, I think it's the best type of content, but also the hardest type of content to master. Mm-hmm. So and that's can, why you've, yeah. If there's a good show, if there's a good long form show, sign me up. Yeah, and that's why you've not chased Sam into the TikTok realms. That's that's your safe place for consumption, right? <laughs> yeah, I love I love TikTok. Uh, it's a problem, uh, but I love it to an extent where. If I start creating on it, which I haven't exactly written off, like maybe someday, but just not, it's not on my agenda currently. Because if I do that, I feel like it ruins the fun of TikTok. Like <laughs> YouTube is absolutely ruined. You just asked me, YouTube or podcast? I'm like, I'm not watching YouTube. So it's like, it's like, uh, it's like working at McDonald's, but then going home and eating more McDonald's for dinner. Like I just, why would, yeah. why would I do that? No, I got you. I got you. And in terms of what you use, like currently as your setup, like what are you using on your desk? What's your current phone? Okay. Just give us a quick rundown. Uh, iPhone 15 Pro, of course, not mm-hmm. the Pro Max because I'm not a monster. Yeah. Uh, I use Atom Audio A8 for my speaker monitors, for my studio monitors. I love th- those are the best speakers known to man. I went through a phase where I tested a bunch, uh, and these are the ones that I like. I, I love them so much that I got a pair for Sam as well for, for his birthday at Christmas one year. Those are on his desk as well. <laughs> uh, of course, Mac Studio uh, with M2 Ultra in it. Uh, a BenQ. Oh God, I don't know. They BenQ sent this monitor. It's probably my favorite monitor I've ever used, but I don't know the name of it because they named their things incorrectly. Mm. It's like the PA39X40. I don't know. I don't know. That rolls name. off the tongue. Yeah, it's really great for marketing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, BenQ monitor that's like very color accurate. Uh, it's for like video editing and stuff. So it's 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 my favorite monitor ever. Um, I just don't know the name of it. Sorry, BenQ. You probably wanted me to remember the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> when they sent it to you. <laughs> yeah, this is this was the whole point. The whole point was for this moment on the I Cave Dave podcast on aluminium, and I messed it up. I didn't know the name. Oh, that was pretty close. That was pretty good. 
like you, you pretty much got it. And you're uh, live from Arkansas right now, right? I am. Yeah, I'm live from Arkansas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> we have to say it the British way. That's how it's yeah. spelled. That's what we're. That's what Ar- we're going to say. Arkansas. It sounds Ar-Kansas. more. It sounds prettier that way. I think so. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, is it I'm next door to Kansas? That way. I'm going to start saying it that way. It sounds. It sounds better. Where do you live? I live in Arkansas. And I live in, in Birmingham, which is uh, Birmingham. a place where you've got one of those as well, haven't you? In uh, Alabama, I think. Birmingham, I Alabama. Yeah, yeah, that sounds right. That yeah. sound, I, I'll, I'll go with that. I don't live in that one. You don't. I live in the. So if I one. go there right now, you're not going to be there. Mm-mm. No, okay. don't make the trip. Damn, It'll be a waste of time. That was. There goes my plans for the night. <laughs> um, and your your first Mac, if I understand it right, your first Mac was actually Apple Silicon, right? Because you were a Windows desktop user. Somebody's got their history. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a. It was the M1 Mac Mini with eight gigs of RAM. And it's a beautiful machine, and it's still really good, even with 8 oh, gigs of RAM. <laughs> absolutely, yeah, life-changing. You wouldn't expect, like in any other scenario, I probably wouldn't have purchased that because it doesn't track, it doesn't compute. Especially, you know, coming from the PC world, you hear that this, this machine has 8 gigabytes of RAM, you're like, I can't even, like, I'm not, no, obviously not, but my PC blew up, uh, and it was in the middle of COVID, and there was, like, nothing... There was nothing around me like I needed. There was I had a deadline to meet, an episode to edit, and uh, there was nothing at the local Best Buy except for like an M1 Mac Mini, eight gigabytes of RAM, and I was like, ah, I guess. So I, I reluctantly purchased it, got it home, and it edited like butter. Yeah, completely changed my <laughs> my view of of Apple Silicon and and what's possible, and uh, yeah, have never looked back since. Yeah, I I think um, I mean I'm using exactly that machine in the Project Ninety One that I built the okay. the Macintosh yep. Classic, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just it still runs my desktop uh, pretty happily. You know, Final Cut, no dramas, uh, yeah. no issues whatsoever. So yeah, it's it's a revelation what happened with Apple Silicon. One um, of the best things that's happened in the last ten years. Hmm. But we do have new news, so I think we're gonna we're gonna cover a little bit of we this. We do have new news, <laughs> and this is uh, this is kind of just dropped. I've had to read up on this immediately before jumping on this call. Um, so the EU's App Store stuff has kind of actually happened, and uh-huh. they've done it without being super crazy. We we really thought they were going to still charge all of the commissions. That we thought they were going to do all of that stuff, but apparently. As we understand it, Apple will still notarize apps, checking them for malware or viruses, but not evaluate their content. They will allow third-party app marketplaces, which you will install just through the regular Apple App Store. There will be no commissions within the EU, but there is a core technology fee of half a euro per 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 installed account. Uh, per year after the first million installs per developer. That seems incredibly fair. So, like, yeah. per user account, it's half a euro. They definitely appled it up. Mm. And EU developers will pay 10 to 17% in commission in the main app store, as opposed okay. to the 15 to 30, which exists right now. Yeah. Th- this seems weirdly, like, not as awful as it could have been. Yeah, it's like a... I mean, I guess we should have seen this coming to an extent after Tim was like meeting with the EU and like that. If you're meeting and ending the meeting on somewhat good terms, there's obviously a compromise that has been made. So mm. I feel like if if this is the compromise, it, all, it also feels like a little it feels a tad bit complicated on purpose. Yeah, I think that's uh, but, I think but that's obviously fair. the brands that want to do this are going to deal with that anyway. And uh mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess everyone sort of gets what they want in a way. Apple, obviously, Apple would rather this not happen at all. But, of course. <laughs> uh, it sounds like Tim was able to pull some strings and uh, and get some Apple in there a little bit in the process, at least. Yeah. And one thing as well, this is changing uh, from iOS 17.4 when that finally comes out. So I guess at the minute we're in uh, beta for that. Uh-huh. Um But worldwide, there will be uh, cloud streaming services will allow to have a single app uh, worldwide. So you can mm. have like an Xbox cloud app and you can have all the games in it. The only proviso that I could see was that you had to put the age rating at like the highest level of anything mm. in the app. So you could have like gotcha. an iCloud, uh, you know, a Xbox cloud kids app. Does that open that up Netflix again? Like, 
Does Netflix have a, a game streaming thing that they were trying to get off the ground? They do, actually, yeah. Um, and that was something that they weren't going to put, I guess, on iOS because of that. But yeah, well, it looks now, like... I wonder if they'll reconsider now. Yeah, maybe. I, I think they'll still ignore the uh, vision, but that's fine. It's as... been a weird. It's been a weird few days, man. Like Nef- <laughs> Netflix is in a really good spot very suddenly. So I'm curious to see what their decisions are like as a business. They're in such a good spot that they just have decided to do away with like the ad supported tier of Netflix. That's gone. Prices are going up. Like, they don't care anymore. <laughs> like something has happened internally to where. I mean, I know that they just signed uh, WWE content. Yeah, Raw. Is it Monday Night Raw or something like that? It's going to be Monday Night... Yeah, it's Monday Night Raw starting in January 2024, but eventually we'll, like, after the licensing fees for WWE elsewhere drops off, like on Fox and USA Network and other places, Netflix will eventually get all of it. So Netflix is going to be making, like, their own documentaries wwe related documentaries they're going to have access to monday night raw and also like the the live events like the pay-per-view stuff once a month so uh they're in a pretty good spot uh and they're they're definitely toying around with not meeting the consumers halfway like they had been because mm. stock had been plummeting everyone's complaining netflix netflix has made all these uh conservations here and now they now they aren't and so it makes me feel like this is another viable option for them to come in. If Apple's going to allow a little bit more to Netflix for Netflix to take a little bit more, obviously they're not going to do it on vision pro for now, but no, but, but I, I completely agree with your take on the vision pro stuff. It's like, if you've not got the good version yet, then stick with the web. Oh, so I'm safe here. Yeah. Yeah. There, <laughs> okay, there's good. no attacks here. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> not on, not on that. Oh. Anyway, I'm sure we'll find something. Um, this is but, why you should host Genius Bar. <laughs> it, it keeps coming up. Like I've, I've told you, uh, I'm just trying to manifest. Speak to it. my people. <laughs> um, but yeah, as well on the Netflix thing, I know they've picked up about 13 million subs uh, in the last couple of months, uh, which is yeah. which is pretty good. Um, and they and, were on the brink of something not great, so that's mm, that's, that's good for them. Yeah, hundred um, percent. But it sounds like what they want to do with the WWE stuff, if you're talking about the um, the documentaries and that side of things, it sounds like what they've already done for Formula One, uh, like with Drive mm, to Survive, yeah, that yeah. massively blew up Formula One, especially during the uh, pandemic when yeah. everything was like shut off. We learned who the characters are behind the scenes and uh, it kind of really brought it home for people. I think that's, yeah. that's what WWE is probably looking for from this. And especially bringing in like, they don't do this often. I know they have a slight history of it, but Monday Night Raw is a live show. So this is going to be like Netflix is slowly turning on options for like uh, appointment viewing. Mm-hmm. So it feels like in a few years we're going to be looking at – it almost feels like a Trojan horse. Like Netflix came in, convinced everyone to cord cut, and now they're just siphoning away everything cable used to do and be, and now they're going to be cable. Yeah. No, I, very, I can... very odd. I definitely see that, and and sort of to move us back up in a little bit towards Apple stuff. What Disney Plus are doing with Vision Pro with those environments mm. and that sort of thing, I can see that working for a lot of the Netflix shows as well, like Stranger yeah. Things, like being in the house to watch the show and that kind of stuff. That might be yeah, pretty but cool. Can you imagine the resources that took from Disney? Like that. That's another thing people keep pointing out is. Uh, well, if Netflix and YouTube and Spotify aren't making an app, why can Disney? And I don't know how short people's memories are. <laughs> Bob Iger, the CEO of Disney, was on stage at WWDC as part of the introduction for Vision Pro. There's obviously an agreement, a partnership there. Somebody's paying somebody. That's a different level of interest than than a brand like Netflix or YouTube would have to be on Vision Pro right away. Yeah, absolutely. And also, um, Bob Iger used to be on the board of Apple. Uh, mm, until yeah. Apple TV Plus was coming and Disney Plus was coming at the same time, and they mm. they kind of split at that point. Disney and Apple go back so far. Like Pixar yeah. was owned by Steve Jobs and sold to Disney. Yeah, uh, <laughs> there's there's so much that goes back there, and I still I I'm not ruling out Disney Apple merger at some point. Oh no, absolutely not. Yeah, I could see that happening. Yeah, I know. There's... Like that's one of those things where if I woke up and that was the headline for tomorrow, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, that that checks out. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Although there's there's certainly people out there in the industry that are like, no, it will never happen. It will absolutely never happen. I don't, uh, never is a very strong word. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, but that that word keeps coming up, and I keep uh, bookmarking tweets. Okay, so... good. <laughs> I know who to come to then. <laughs> so whenever it happens, <laughs> I'll be like, about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have some receipts to show you. Yes, yes. That that was uh, that was my big thing. I actually did a video the other week. Uh, in fact, last week I think it was probably my favorite video I've done for a while, which was about Vision Pro actually being a really great value when mm -hmm. you compare yep. it to like the um uh, you know, the Pro Display XDRs and that kind of stuff when you yeah. can extend your Mac onto it like or a really big TV or you know, uh, yeah. I think Sigmund Judge was talking about how well, Sigmund yeah, great guy. Met up with him at, um, at Battersea when they were opening the, the new store in London. Um, mm. But he was saying, like, if you wanted to get a 3D projector to actually watch this stuff properly, you're into the twenty thirty thousand dollars $30,000 at yeah. least. Um, so Vision Pro looks like a really good deal if you're really yeah. into your content cr uh, consumption. Well, especially well. ju just from a hardware standpoint alone. Like if you understand what you're getting, it is an it's an, it is an insane value. Mm. The fact that they even can make that at all and sell it is nuts. Yeah, didn't we hear beforehand that the displays themselves were like over a thousand dollars at cost to Apple? When you yeah, like when you uh, look at the uh, repairability stuff on Apple's website, if you don't have a, if if you have Apple Care, it's still expensive. But mm -hmm. the front glass alone, so not even the displays, is like an eight ninety nine repair price. Is that laminated to, to that the out. OLED? The... I'm not sure. I don't make them. <clears throat> I don't know. <laughs> I no. have no idea. But I would imagine. I don't know. It's, like it's going to be interesting to see it, the. I almost ends. feel yeah. I almost feel like the displays have got to be over one k by themselves. Mm -hmm. It's it's insane. Yeah, I've got a feeling that front glass because uh, people were saying, oh, but you can use it without the front glass really mattering. No, you can't. All of the cameras are in it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all yep, the cameras, all the sensors. You're not going to be able to pinch. Yep, you're not going to be doing right. anything without that front right. glass intact. Um, crazy there's like 12 sensors just in that i think uh -huh. which is probably why it's so expensive i wouldn't be surprised if this thing is only marked up like a thousand dollars if that yeah i i think it might even be less than that at this point and i know apple wouldn't likes to get to like a, a decent a decent margin on stuff but uh yeah something like 38 percent they normally look for i think um, well, I guess I guess that's one of those that. things where we're going to have to wait for the teardowns for us to have like proper estimations of all this stuff. Yeah, so that iFixit can complain that it's too hard to fix. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's yeah. coming. One, one out of ten. Yeah, um, don't drop it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's not what it's for. Get the two hundred dollar travel case. Don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Um, and I know you've been kind of historically on the middle ground on Vision Pro since it was announced. Like, you were super I'm very, excited. I'm very grateful that that's how you framed it, because not many people would say <laughs> I'm in the middle. Well, you, I think you are. You're excited to get your hands on it. You've, you've I think I am too, yeah. thrown the dollars down for it, so yeah. you can't be that skeptical. Um, one thing that uh, got mentioned in the last Genius Bar, I think, was that uh, 300 apps at launch um that are native to yeah. vision pro and then yeah, it's less i think it's like 250 or something yeah so crazy i'm sure they're working hard on it um the, the fact that apple hasn't updated all of their apps to be spatial in the first place does seem a little lazy yeah come on like oh dog don't, don't get me started that's <laughs> awful it's it's not the best but i was thinking about this right if you were an app developer and you, all you'd been able to test with the, the actual hardware was like a couple of times in their labs, like with hands on with the actual physical devices, would you want to drop your app on day one when there's 300 ish new apps, plus all of the stuff that Apple's going to be throwing at it for the first couple uh -huh. of weeks? Or do you hold off for a week or two, test it on the physical hardware, make sure that it all works properly. And then once that's died down slightly, then you can send it out to some of the, uh, the websites, the news sites, and hopefully get some coverage when people have kind of tipped off and they've, yeah. they've played with all the base stuff. That would be yeah. my thought on it, and I'm hoping that that's what everyone's doing. <laughs> it just depends on it depends on where you're at. Like, mm -hmm. if you are a hardcore indie developer, and there's benefit to being there on launch, like there's a certain 
there's a level of indie developer that can benefit in such a way that a Netflix couldn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Where like on launch day, I know they sold like 180k units according to Quo, but on launch day we're likely going to have like those initial 80,000 units that were manufactured and ready actually in people's hands. Yeah. And 80,000 people is nothing to Netflix. Mm -hmm. 80,000 people is a lot to an indie developer. So it's it's just risk reward. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, it it might not be exactly how you'd like to release it, but can will you benefit if you are one of the launch apps on Vision Pro? Can your company, your brand benefit from that where other where other people couldn't? It's yeah. like um I it's similar to how I how I framed uh there's a certain level of Vision Pro coverage that I can get away with that doesn't match the level you can get away with. Like mm -hmm. you can get you are Vision Pro content benefits you way more than it does me. And that's the question that I've been wondering and that's why I released my video about like no one cares. That's the question I'm posing. Like why as a professional that I'm supposed to be able to anticipate how a video is going to do before it goes out. That's why you make the video in the first place, obviously. Why am I questioning whether or not a Vision Pro video works? Yeah. I don't actually know that answer, so I was genuinely asking that question. It just it's it's uh it's it's rather confusing. So yeah, for an indie developer, they're they're at a different level of uh, risk being worth the reward for them. Yeah, no, it's it's interesting to hear how you think of it as a professional on YouTube, whereas I'm maintaining my amateur status so I can YouTube at the Olympics. Um... <laughs> <laughs> no, I would argue. No, I'd argue that like, um, I'd argue that you're just as much of, of a professional YouTuber as me, like at the end of the day, we're kind of trying to meet the same goal. Like not all YouTubers understand the supply and demand aspect of it. And they are just sort of making videos and they think people should watch the videos just because they made them. That's a whole separate conversation. Um, but like they're actively making vision pro content and pursuing that is a net benefit for you. Mm -hmm. and uh so that's why that's why i love i love times like this like this is uh vision pro on the way up is going to take a lot of people with it yeah and I so i think people like you are very smart for being a part of it there's there's a lot of uh i mean i wish i watched more tech content uh if i'm <laughs> i hope i'm not speaking out of turn for uh other friends of mine but you are one of the very few tech channels that i actually watch Oh. It's I probably shouldn't say that out loud, <laughs> but like, it's one of those things where I'm doing it all day. I'm reading the same stuff. I'm hearing the same stuff. I'm making the same stuff. So then in my free time, what do I want to watch? So on the, <laughs> on a very rare occasion is a tech content. And you're one of the very few that slips through where I watch every video. Oh, I'm super touched. Not to man. toot your own horn, but you know. <laughs> well, no, but this is getting clipped. Um, just so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we have an understanding. Okay. <laughs> no, absolutely. It's, um, I, I don't know how many of my audience remember, but like right at the beginning of uh, my sort of journey on YouTube, uh, I think it was one of my first couple of live streams that you jumped in and you like dropped down a super chat. And I was like, well, mm. but this isn't the real John Prosser though, is it? Yeah. <laughs> and it was. So yeah, it uh, always I, is. I do have to thank you for that. Cause it was, it was oh, like super touching and it was like, it, it kind of, it, it gave me a real boost to be like, yeah, I can actually do this. Like people well, I think, do watch. I think a lot of people, and I don't know why this is, but when I started YouTube, people were very much like against each other. Mm -hmm. Everyone, no one knew the secrets, but everyone thought they knew the secrets. And so they couldn't talk to you because they didn't want you to know the secrets. And now there's like a, a sense of community in every space, but also the tech space, because that's what we're a part of, obviously, that didn't exist back then. But what still exists is there are friends of mine that I know, I'm not going to out anybody, that do watch and appreciate a lot of channels that they that those channels will never know. Mm -hmm. And it's like if they just knew that one tiny little – it might seem small and tiny, but like when I – there was no one doing that when I started. So when I see, when I see someone that like – and I'm not wrong. There's like <laughs> all the people that I have pointed out or like uh, promoted – in this space are still doing it even five years or 10 years after I found them, they're still doing it. So I know how to find them. I know how to pick them. I know who's like in it for the right reasons. And so if I, if I see that, I, it's, I, I don't think it's fair for me to just uh, watch quietly. 
because sometimes that's that's one of those things that gets you to the next the next thing like when you're in a plateau or you're not feeling great about yourself it's those little those little things that just remind you that we're all human and uh if it's 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 kind of like the little the little bit of joy i got coming on the, when you started the show and you started doing the intro i'm like i've heard this intro before but now i'm on the show so now i'm going to be able to see it like uploaded so it's just like it's just one of those things where uh i i wish more people spoke up like that cuz um i really i really appreciate and love your content and if i were to imagine if i was still just quietly watching <laughs> yeah like, that would be really it doesn't make any sense to me yeah um yeah it it's weird because I don't really recognize the intro to the show yet. So I still have to, I, I have to like write it down and script it. So you'll be like, why yeah, is he you looking off to the it. side a little <laughs> yeah. bit? That's, that's pretty strange. Um, because yeah, when, I, when I do my regular shows now, I do use the teleprompter. So I've just got another iPhone mm. sitting underneath, but I try to write it in my voice in the first place as well, which yeah. I think makes a big difference. And actually when you were saying about the, the kind of experimenting with stuff on YouTube, um, the, the show that I put out yesterday at the time of publishing, which is today, um, mm. <laughs> it's such a weird thing when you record stuff and then don't put it out the same day for me. Yeah. Like If I don't record something and then immediately edit it and throw it up on the internet, it doesn't exist to me anymore in, in the world. It, might, it <laughs> disappears out of my head and I can't be bothered yeah, well, to even when, edit when it. When you say it that way, I can't remember the last... Maybe the Apple Watch getting banned is mm -hmm. the last time we actually recorded and put an episode out in the same day. Yeah. That has become fewer and far between somehow. Mm -hmm. It used to be this it used to be fast and in the same day. I, I we used to be able to pump these out in like like from beginning to end, maybe four hours. Yeah. Five, okay, five hours on average, but five, four <laughs> hours if, if it's a good day. But now it takes days to mm -hmm. get an episode out. It's insane. Now that's that's the thing. I've I've really tried to sort of streamline as much as I can, because mm -hmm. it's just me, um, and I have a full time job and a family, uh, yeah. and stuff like that. So like today we're recording at like ten thirty. Well, ten thirty now at night for me, and like in the yeah. afternoon for yourself. Uh, I got home about an hour before we started recording from work. Oh, perfect. So yeah, <laughs> I've, I've I've traveled the length and breadth of the country today in the car, <laughs> nearly emptied a tank of fuel. Um, uh -huh. It's been it's been a day, um, but you've been traveling recently as well, right? So you were over towards CES and <laughs> never you, again. I know you, you actually made it onto the onto the show floor, which I didn't think was going to be happening. But me either. What was what were the good, bad, and ugly things about your trip? So I know AI was everywhere, but you met up with some people. You squished into the back of an Uber with. Jacqueline and yeah, Snazzy, and I Quinn, think, was there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Tell us about uh, that. a couple months ago, Andrew Edwards texted me. Now, keep in mind, when I when I was, let's say, circa 2013, 2014, towards the first few years of Front Page Tech, I always thought, man, if we could just be invited to CES somehow, like that, we'd get so many subscribers because we're covering stuff so early. And it's so naive looking back. But <laughs> then eventually, a few years later, CES started asking me to come there. And like uh, the, for the last like three years, CES was asking me to host a, a, a thing at, on the show floor called the last gadget standing. Okay. It's like a, it's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a like game a game show. show sort of thing. Yeah. And I turned them down every year and I refused to go to CES. And then a couple months ago, Andrew Edwards texted me and it's like, Hey, everyone's going to be in the area for CES and I'm hosting a dinner with YouTube. And it would just mean a lot if you were there. So I was like, okay, I'll, yeah, I'll count me and I'll be at the party or the dinner, whatever it's called. So I flew in that day just for that dinner. And uh, that was really cool. Got to meet a lot of people that I've talked with for years that I got to, you know, meet in person. Um, Quinn, Quinn's up there. On the, Quinn and I have been back and forth literally trying to meet in person for so long. And then one of us is sick or not sick. And so this was, it was g great to finally meet him. And then of course I met Jacqueline and, uh dan from mac rumors who i've who i've been in person with a few times now uh brandon lee from this is tech today great meeting him joshua bain a, a bunch of a bunch of uh a bunch of people from from the industry and that was really cool hanging out with them and have a dinner with them i say have dinner i use that lightly because i didn't need a damn thing <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh, yeah i well andrew in his speech had told people that i was coming so people when i showed up to the dinner and I never show up to anything in person. So it was just a lot of people trying to talk to me and pull me in every direction. So I didn't get to actually eat the dinner. I'm sure it was delicious though. Mm -hmm. And then we went to some awards show after that where I got to hang out with more friends, which was cool. Get to meet people. Uh, 
Um, and then the next day, I I had a breakfast with Nomad. Okay. So there was like eight of us going to this breakfast with Chuck, the CEO of Nomad, and so met up for breakfast. And then what I didn't know was where the breakfast was was basically where the show was too. I was I did not I was literally that oblivious. I did not know CES was happening on the floor <laughs> below us. So that's not, I just showed up for the breakfast that I had breakfast and then. Quinn was going on the show floor and I'm like, I mean, I guess I'll go. CES had given me a, a badge. And so I was like, I, cause I had tweeted that I was going to, I'm not going to CES. So of course they give me a badge. Yeah. And then, uh, I just decided, okay, like I'll go on the show floor with, with Quinn. And so we did that. And, uh, a few people came up and said hi, which was really cool. Uh, but I think I mentioned this on genius bar. I will never do it again because of how much of a catastrophe CES is. <laughs> and, I only went there like no brand paid me to be there. I had no obligation. I wasn't there to talk with any brands. I was only there to say hi to people. And I, it was like, I bet half the people that walked past me with their face buried in their phone just had no idea that they walked past me. So it's like, it's a tech conference. The future of technology is right in front of you and everyone is on their phone mm -hmm. because everything's so hard to navigate there. I you mean, know, like there's so many different showroom floors and it's a mess. Yeah. It, it looked like it was hugely spread out as well. It, it sounds a bit like, you know, when Adam Savage goes to Comic-Con, but he goes in full cosplay so that nobody <laughs> knows he's there Maybe on that's the floor. What I'll do. <laughs> I think so. I think that's what we need to do is like, all turn up as different video game characters or something. I love it. That's, <laughs> oh, that's damn, next year. I'm so we're in. sad I didn't think about this already. <laughs> you're you're like just a couple weeks late. I know, this idea. but it gives us a whole year to get these costumes uh, ready. I mean, <laughs> we're talking like masked singer level costumes, yeah. right? That's what we well, need. I don't think I've ever said this publicly, but there was an idea that I that was thrown around for Genius Bar Goes Dark mm -hmm. for the event that we did back in June. Uh, where I was going to be dressed in like an actually good quality old man mm. mask and then like cause a ruckus at the beginning of the show, have security kick me out only later to reveal that it was me the whole time. Nice. Uh, that was an idea that got thrown out early. So is this is this your uh, magic background coming through? Is this? <laughs> yeah that was it yeah <laughs> you, you disappear into a box on the stage yeah and then as it's carried off you appear from the back of the auditorium <laughs> yeah, I'm in the back of the audience that's, like, that's gotcha. what happens yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's perfectly uh, original you know nobody's much. ever done you it know too much <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I've been on those stage shows, my friend. I've, I know. I've been... <laughs> You're, you, I mean, you actually pursue magic as well. I mean, not, I don't not pursue so much it now. exactly, but no. yeah. But uh, yeah, certainly in the Pad past, phase. like I've got a whole like stack of different decks up there. Like, oh yeah, dude, I've got, yes, and... I've got a closet full of <laughs> kits and decks and yeah. My I bet if someone Road raided book. our closets, it would be too similar. Mm, yeah, that's... The stuff that we're interested in is probably too similar. Yeah, that's that's probably a little worrying. We're, we're yeah, like, like the transatlantic like someone, twins. <laughs> yeah, like there was just a pile of our shit, and someone had to be like, "Okay, now organize Dave stuff over here and John stuff over here." No one would know where to put anything. <laughs> you would have the <laughs> slightly more expensive Max. I think that's the. <laughs> uh, I mean, I only, I yeah, I guess I got a, I have a Max studio somewhere. We won't count that closet. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, just no. the magic one. I mean, I, I'm still running. Like this whole show is produced from the M2 MacBook Air. Like the 13 inch mm, from Open okay, Day. Yeah. It, Best Mac. Yeah, it's great. Best Mac. And it's shot on iPhone. This is iPhone 14. Uh, oh, really? On continuity wow. camera. You're really walking the walk. Wireless, yep. Shot on iPhone. This is this is how we roll. You know, if you're going to do it. it, do it. But I think yeah. the, the camera <laughs> quality now looks so good. Like, Yeah, well, I, I was looking and wondering, like, I didn't know if it was a webcam or if you were using, uh, like, a point shoot or I nope. definitely, I, iPhone was not on the radar. No, switched over from a Lumix really early on when the 12 mm. Pro Max came out. Gotcha. Um, I had a 4K, like, do Lumix you, G7. Do you shoot your videos on iPhone? Mm -hmm. What? It's no way. Directly huh. into the Mac as well. It doesn't even get airdropped. It's just Wi Fi wow. okay. continuity camera. I'm impressed. Yeah. That's damn everything. <laughs> the works. Crazy. So yeah. Um it's surprising how, how difficult it is to tell the difference now anyway. So Yeah. I think I'm too Maybe I'm too stubborn. Cause like the uh, you can't argue the quality of uh of phone cameras now. Mm -hmm. iPhone especially when it comes to video. But uh I it's like no matter how good it gets, there's something about all the settings, all the buttons, all the options and the analog aspect of cameras mm -hmm. that still exists obviously. Like I I I 
at heart, I'm very much attracted to filmmaking and and using the actual equipment. So it's like even if even if the iPhone, even if you could show me footage where I objectively think that the footage from the iPhone is better, I would still be using more traditional equipment just because that's what feels uh it's what I'm comfortable with. It makes me feel at home. Yeah. You know, I've, I've, but since before front page tech stuff, I was really drawn into, uh, to filmmaking. And I, we did like, oh God, I hope no one ever finds them. But we had like, we did short films back in the day. Brian and I, before front page tech, had a channel where we made some comedy sketches and short films. And Amazing. oh, like, look, thinking back now is real cringe. But yeah, that's how we started. No, it's uh, that's that's cool. I think we do need to start a internet wide search though to find these films. So if anyone wants to join oh, the God. search, we're going to do like an Easter egg hunt oh, for God. for John's I'll, early work. I'll, I'll text them to you. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we're somewhere. we're on that now, so we can we can do all the behind the scenes stuff that nobody will ever know about. Yeah. All of the really can cool never stuff. leak. <laughs> it's like everyone that gets my phone number, I. There's like a there's like a certain threshold where it's do I think this person would ever leak a text message thread with me? If the answer is no, then they get my phone number because there's like once once you have my phone number, there's no turning back. No, nope, no. Nope. Yeah, I'll probably <laughs> say something I shouldn't say. <laughs> I was stunned actually that you didn't just send me like a burner email account that you attach to iMessage because <laughs> no, that's much easier. <laughs> well, this isn't the first time we've talked. No, <laughs> no, it's it's been a few times now. And it is. Yeah. Um. I. I. You are one of the guys that I've looked up to. I used to actually watch you way back in the Talosive Wars days. <laughs> uh. Like that's how far back. Ooh. Uh. My my YouTube viewing goes at least. Uh. I got a little taste of the Talosive front page tech wars yesterday. I know. I noticed this on Twitter. History. Right. Yeah. What was going on? Oh, it wasn't. It was just a really smart SEO move from him. Uh, you know, we put out a video yesterday called the the beginning of the end of iPhone. And it was about how, like, in 10 years, things are going to look much different. Mm. And he put out a video a few hours later that said uh, smartphones will not be replaced. So it's like the counter argument to mine the same day that mine came out. It was a smart, smart move. All the comments were talking about it, too. So. Oh, nice. But that, that reminded me of the Talos of days of uh, that was it like was one, the phones, what, wasn't it? No way. Hang on. Are you telling me that you've been watching from page tech since like iPhone 10? Oh yeah. Wh what? Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. That's insanity. What? Well, like, I've I've been an iPhone user since the iPhone 4. Um, yeah. So I picked that up like when it just Which came I, I out. I have right here on my desk. Yeah, me too. I've got one somewhere. Um, I've got a five. I've got a. Uh, this order. is the iPhone from the Tim Cook documentary. It's, oh, the one. Yes, that was work. that was a pretty awesome shot. Um, yeah, no, I I've been using the iPhone since then, and then I got like a 2011 MacBook Air 11 inch. Mm tiny little baby toy. Tiny, tiny little baby. It's so small. <laughs> um, and it's still sitting up on my shelf up there, and it still works. Uh, it's good. Uh, I might put Open Core on it and just see if I can put uh, Sonoma on it. Uh, <laughs> that yeah. might be crazy with four gigs of RAM, yeah. but we'll see. <laughs> mm. But like actually four gigs of RAM, yeah, not like unified memory. Intel. Like the Intel real deal. RAM. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the real deal. Um but actually when when you were just saying about the the stuff with Talosive, Vision Pro, do you think it's actually going to replace iPhone or is it more likely to replace the Mac in the long term? I don't think it's hard I'm glad you're asking me in a format where I have more than 20 seconds mm -hmm. because it's hard to translate the feeling that I have because a lot of this stuff is just gut feeling. Mm -hmm. And I think that not – like how we view Vision Pro now, it, that's not going to replace the iPhone. My argument is whatever Vision Pro becomes in 10 years, like whatever we make of this project is going to be the replacement for – for the iPhone. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have made the argument, like Drew included, that um, like, what about taking selfies and stuff? And I th I don't think the next replacement, the replacement for the iPhone is not going to be the replacement for everything the iPhone does. The next replacement for iPhone just has to make the iPhone seem like an accessory. Like the, the iPhone seems like such a core part of our lives right now, your smartphone in general, even if you're not on iOS. And I think we're at a point where we're trying to 
I think we've taken that too far. It's like when, you know what the Uncanny Valley is? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so there was a point in animation. So we're talking Polar Express around that time. So I don't know what year that was. Like maybe 2003-ish. I don't know yeah. when Polar Express came out. Um, where animation was getting to be too human. And so now you've noticed, even though we're many, many years past that, animation has gone backwards. There's a, animated features are way more exaggerated. Eyes are bigger. You know, every, everything is made to look cute in animation. Yeah. But there was a there was a phase in animation where we were getting as close to human as possible until we got so close that it became unnerving. And that point we, was when they tried to remove Henry Cavill's mustache. That's the point when it happened. Yes, exactly that moment. And yeah. his teeth were kind of... Yeah, we hit, like, we hit some sort of uncanny valley where now animation, even though we could do things like if you... Like, Unreal Engine and stuff like... Uh, like Stuff that's happening in gaming right now is actually insane. Like I'm questioning footage that I'm seeing. There's so many things that I've seen on TikTok where I assumed that was real, only later to find out that it wasn't real at all. Mm -hmm. And so now I feel like... The same level we hit with animation where we had to back it up a little bit, I think we're all feeling with smartphones now and the lack of privacy we have and how hard it is to disconnect. We can add things like screen time, and that still doesn't help because screen time is still telling you, hey, man, you spent eight hours on the phone like per usual every day. And I think, I think elements like the rabbit AI, stuff like that that is trying to separate us from smartphones is a side effect of that. I don't think I commend startups like that that are trying to do things a little bit differently i think they've got they're on the right track but i think that's all a side effect of us being our, our smartphones starting to be too demanding of us now yeah like even i i i fully understand what has happened to me i understand that i did not like as i was growing up i didn't have a smartphone and that was fine and my life was a certain way and i know what it's like without it and I have seen this happen to myself where I am very much addicted to this device. And if someone took it away from me, I wouldn't know what to do. I can only imagine being born into this. You know, people are being born, being handed iPads and iPhones. And that's insane to me. So if I can't separate myself, someone who did grow up without this stuff, I can't imagine how we could possibly start to separate the people that have grown up in this. Yeah, I think. And I feel like th as uh, like part of humanity wants to separate us from this stuff just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I think there's going to be a device that that acts on our core needs of these devices, but starts to give us more options to separate ourselves. And I think that's what the future ultimately is. I think the iPhone does everything. And that is what got us here. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've certainly started using my phone more while it's in my pocket through AirPods, which I guess is Mm. about as close as you're going to get to these AI pins without having an yeah. AI pin. I'm not sure that they are the solution. I think the idea of the smart speakers around the house and the idea that you interact with your your cloud compute, if you like, you know, your calendar, uh -huh. things like that, uh, listening to your podcasts as you move through the house and them having awareness of where you are in the house, that would be quite nice. So, like, yeah. it's not playing throughout the whole house. If you're there on your right. own, it just follows you. <laughs> that might be quite yeah, cool. Yeah, but it's like the but the people that are making these AI pins and stuff, it's like I commend them because they're forward. They see the problem. Yeah. Not a lot of people are 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 seeing how tangible this issue actually is. And the people that are making, like, Rabbit AI, they see the problem. They're just giving the wrong, um, the wrong prescription for the diagnosis, it feels yeah. like. I, I definitely agree, especially with like things like Humane. I think the, the idea of the laser display on your hand, that's the goofiest thing I've ever seen. Um, it, <laughs> yeah. it just like, <laughs> is, forever, is that the best Jesus. we could do? Like, surely yeah. this whole thing could be like an Apple Watch. Like, yeah. would this not make more sense with an actual screen on it so you can actually read things actually without yeah. having to adjust the focus of your hand length? You know, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that's pretty tricky and any sort of projector have they tried outdoors in the daytime <laughs> it just we don't of... know we don't talk about that that's not in the pr material we can't say we can't talk about that <laughs> what i mean okay what do you think though like you don't have to agree with me but what do you think that my argument is not that vision pro as you see it right now will replace the iphone but the, my argument is that project will eventually replace what we use our iPhone for mm -hmm. and the iPhone, if, if it's still around, will become more of an accessory. 
uh, do you, do you think that is I, out of the question, uh, or what do you see happening? I, I find it tricky. Like I've used VR as well, so I got sent the Pico yeah. headset. Um, so yeah. not the the Quest, but TikTok's version, because TikTok versus Facebook. Oh, it's it's such <laughs> yeah. a tricky one. Which one oh. do I trust the most? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I've played around with that. It's got walk around golf, so that's the most important feature. Um, okay, yeah, of course. In terms Glad of, we agree. yeah, in terms of what we're going to do into uh, replacing the iPhones functions, I think the the Apple Glass that we heard about, the the version that everyone kind mm -hmm. of thinks we're going to get to, where you've got a pair of glasses, it projects onto it. You're not going to be watching full blown content on it because you're not going to mm -hmm. have the contrast on the background. It's like the yeah. clear TVs that everyone raved about at CES. But why do you want to see the wall? Like. Unless your wall is painted black, <laughs> yeah. it doesn't yeah. help. It's interesting for a yeah. shop display, and that's kind of it. I think it's going to be a lot closer to what we use the Apple Watch for. It's going to be like a heads-up display rather than a glance-down display. Um, mm -hmm. I still think anyone that wants to have a, a camera on an Apple Watch is clinically insane. Um, yeah. <laughs> because I, I don't yeah. want to FaceTime people up my nose it like it's bad yeah. enough as it is like just uh, that's not a good angle <laughs> for anyone right yeah um but i do think like the idea of a persona that you could use with apple glasses might be a decent idea if it's looking at your eyes it's picking up your expressions because your eyes are the most expressive part of your face anyway it can probably sort mm -hmm. of extrapolate the rest of your face that might work um I do think like the idea of having like the bone conduction audio from it, if you don't want to wear AirPods, that kind of stuff mm -hmm. might work. The issue we're going to have is battery life on all of these things, because to do anything yeah. to that level, you're going to need a lot more than you can get in like the meta ray bands or something along those lines, Yeah, which can record like the odd video clip. And I think that's it. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, there's yeah, there's going to have to be significant battery tech that develops in the next ten years, fifteen years. Oh no, I've whatever. got it. I mean, there was Apple's Apple's nailed what, it already. You got it. You just you have the big battery pack in your pocket. Yes, you and just a long plug cable. it in <laughs> to a one pound battery pack. Yeah, which why? Oh, <laughs> oh no! If, if it's oh, an no. external Sorry, battery trigger pack, warning. <laughs> if it's a if it's an external battery pack, why didn't you make it bigger? Because it's really how is two hours acceptable? Because it's really heavy and made of metal. It's already external. Then don't make it out of metal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if it's if metal is why we get two hours, don't make it out of metal. Well, the thing is, you should be able to daisy chain it to like a high capacity battery That's pack. Insane. Oh yes, it's it's a horrible solution, but it would work. Like you know the Shar Geek <sighs> things that look like definitely a bomb. Um, yeah, definitely. that you definitely oh, yeah. don't want to fly with. Yeah. Um, but they are apparently aircraft safe. Um, <sighs> it says on the side of it. I'm not going to test that. Yeah, it says it. So mm -hmm. um, must be true. I, I, I've got to say that thing is an absolute beast. Like we we've charged like multiple laptops from that thing. Uh -huh. It's 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 good. If you want to carry that around in a satchel or rucksack <laughs> or you know yeah small wheelbarrow, uh, you know you could you could just... do that. It just, uh, the, I'm so ex That's why I'm so conflicted because I'm mm. so excited about this, and I know the potential. Like Apple doesn't have to tell me the potential of this, oh, but we people like us knew the potential going in before the announcement ever happened. Mm -hmm. And it's just like there's so many aspects of it that just feel so subpar. Yeah, I think so. And but that are excusable for a smaller version of Apple, like an Apple that is trying to take the risks and doesn't have the resources that they have but they have unlimited resources out of all the tech companies they have the unlimited resources and this is what we got and they still can't get a game developer to make a game for the mac properly <laughs> <laughs> but i am wondering you know is there going to be some surprise announcement that they're like oh and resident evil village for apple vision pro and then people just just fall apart because it's so terrifying uh -huh. like that seems like an absolute <laughs> Yeah. absolute killer app for it. Not, uh, even even in like uh i don't know if it was a resident evil game but i played on the quest 2 like last year or something i played five nights of freddy's mm -hmm. we'll never do anything like that again <laughs> anyone that wishes that amount of pain on themselves i don't know what's wrong with you 
You're a sadist. That's, that w- it's the worst experience of my life. That's Matt Pat's special, isn't it? Maybe he played it on it, VR and he and was just like, no, nope, I can't do it anymore. Yeah, that's in like not the high fidelity that's going to be on the Vision Pro. Like, all, that c- no way. <laughs> it's, yeah. They, just, they should just call the app Heart Attack. Okay, that's fair. Is that, do you just open it up and see how long you last? Yep. <laughs> yeah. It, For me, it was like a good 10 minutes. Does it have all the same, uh, like, all the same warnings as if you go to a theme park on a roller coaster? It's like, don't use it if you've got back <laughs> yeah. issues. I mean, neck issues, probably, yeah. is Vision Pro. Yeah. Uh, hey. Every Thanks, time. FaceTime. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, it, there's, there's just so much that's, like, big question marks. And it doesn't seem like we're going to get many answers until this is, like, in purchasers' hands, as opposed to. Yeah. It doesn't seem like... I mean, we are what a week away now. Is it? It's bang on a week, right? Yep. Why is it coming out bang on a on. Thursday? That doesn't happen. Actually, wait. Yeah. Yeah. That, Why is that? That confused me while I was looking at my calendar. Wait, what? Yeah, it's always a Friday, <laughs> the second of uh, February. Now is I have a to look. Thursday. Oh, okay. Well, a second is a Friday here. Is that what? No, that can't be the case because isn't January thirty days? February second is the is Friday. Oh, okay. Yeah, Groundhog Day too. If you cared, I, I'm not into Bill Murray movies anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> not after the the Ghostbusters debacle that ruined everything for us. Oh. The newer one's better. Oh yeah, I forgot. I forgot that happened. Yeah, sorry. What a shame. Brought that back for you. Um, yep, I'd rather go back into Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, so yeah, there's 31 days in January. That's that was my issue. I was getting a spare day back. Way to go, Dave. I was doing my best. Yeah, in the UK, <laughs> we only have 30 in January. So, um, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my excuse, and I'm Wait, sticking do you... No. Okay. I, no, I'm not even... No, for a split second, I was like, is that true? <laughs> yeah, no, it was It was added... Uh, it's Independence Day in the States where it, okay. we recatch up, because we, we gotcha. don't acknowledge we'll the 4th of July. Up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Traitor Day, as we call it. Traitor Day. <clears throat> Yeah, we we get really, we're still we're still bitter about the tea stuff. <laughs> Not well, me personally. We're, we're uh, <laughs> yeah, we're messing our own stuff over here on our own though, so that's fine. Oh, we we're not doing much better. We're not doing much better. Anyway, John, thank you so much for doing this today. Really, really appreciate uh, having it? you on. Do you want to keep going? Like we've Let's been keep doing going it for fifteen minutes. Yeah, I don't care. Let's keep going. Cool. What time is it? What are you going to tell me about? Doing an hour. Let's make some people upset, John. Tell me about something. Okay. Go ahead. No, I was gonna. I was like asking you. Like, sure, you're the make controversial people, one. Make people upset. Yeah. What's What's your hottest oh, take on something Apple related right now? It feels like it's it's it feels like it's my take that uh, no one cares about Vision Pro. But they do care. Hmm. I think it's the price point. That's that's it right now, and. I think people are interested. I think the wider public don't know what it is yet or why it's different. And that's what is going to come out once it's in people's hands. Once there's user-generated content from this stuff, that's when we're actually going to know. Because everything's been so protected so far. I agree. I just that That's why I keep saying Apple missed the landing. Yeah. It shouldn't be up to a they bunch did. of YouTubers trying to inform the public. Like, if you're going to launch a product, you should be able to tell us. But you know what? Every time it comes down to the YouTubers, because Apple puts up their graphs that don't mean anything, just to just to <laughs> bait Linus. Um, just to, yeah, it's just for Linus. Yeah, which which I'm I'm here for. Um, like let's let's just bait him into just shouting yeah. about it every single time. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny. They've ordered Vision Pro, but it's not arriving until mid March, I don't think. Oh, which is just brilliant for a content creation company to be yeah, so perfect. on the ball. Perfect timing. Yeah. Um, so there's, I will have used it before him and made videos. Um, yeah. Which wait, okay. So you you pre-ordered? No. Okay. But, well, that's what it sounded like. But, you said, but you I will have used, used it before him. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Because gotcha. Because my good friend Sigmund has. Ah, <laughs> uh, gotcha. And he's okay. So what happens if you're totally blown away? Then I'll sell a child or something so that I can afford. It. <laughs> Well, like that's I. That's the thing. Like I know technologically, I'm going to be blown away. Mm-hmm. There's not going to be anything that I've seen remotely close to that. Yeah. But as I keep saying, like, what happens three, four weeks after that? Well, that's it's sort of. I try to differentiate on Genius Bar what I consider 
a good tech product in my life. Not saying it, it not, I don't want to paint everyone with the same brush, but keeping it charged. It's like if I, yeah, <laughs> if I keep it charged on instinct, mm -hmm. then it's good in my life. Yeah. Like, like I never once think, like I'm never like, oh, I want to wear my Apple Watch today. Oh, damn, it's not charged. It's always charged. I have two. You have That's two what? Apple Watches. Oh. What the hell? I've never seen no, that before. That, we that just looks discovered too a new good. One. I said that I have two. Too good. And then bubbles. What the hell? The depth amazing. of feet. Is I going to do that? Probably. Hey. Damn it. Oh, it's continuity camera. That's the beauty. But yeah, like that's how. Wait, you keep two charged all the time? I keep one charged and one on. So this oh, one lives smart. on the charger. Okay, so they're the same model. Uh, so this is my old SE. Okay. And this is a Series 7, which I picked up when the 9 came out, because it's the gotcha. same. It's the same. Yeah, <laughs> it is literally <laughs> the same, yeah. That's what happens when there's no competition mm -hmm. in the area, in the market, yeah. Uh, and uh, this one has blood oxygen monitoring, which is great. Uh, so that's that's really good mm. to have as well. But yeah, uh, no, I keep one on the charger. Like, this is my old one. So I wear that while I sleep, and then it does the sleep tracking uh -huh. and does the waking you up nicely. And then as soon as you switch them in the morning, everything updates, and yeah, it's it's really nice. Yeah. I feel like... Um, I feel like I'm waiting for... Not the, not the killer feature or, like, the killer app, the killer developer. I want... I, I want to know what Apple considers to be this product's the Vision Pro. Mm -hmm. I want to know what they think is the flagship feature of of this product, like what they consider to be the flagship feature. If do they do they think it's spatial video? I think that's the thing that's going to connect emotionally with people the most. Yeah, but I don't think there's enough out there, and I don't think the iPhone capturing it is a particularly good solution based on the cameras that we have now because mm -hmm. the parallax between the cameras is so small. Yeah. Now when the well, it's like you know, you know the old uh iPod iPod touches that came out and they had mm -hmm. the the little wrist strap bump on yeah. the bottom. When I saw the cans for that I was like are they going to put a camera on both ends so that you can capture mm. 3D video <laughs> because this is yeah. when 3D TVs were coming out. Yeah. That's where you need oh, to have two cameras. What a terrible time in history. But that's where you need to have two cameras. Yeah. And I, I, I'm i not unconvinced that Apple will bring out an Apple TV that is 3D capable. Like an Apple mm -hmm. TV box that is 3D capable with 3D TVs to watch spatial video. Yeah. It seems like a good evolution <sighs> of spatial. Yeah. Well, it's okay. So when... Because we made... Uh, I mean, not the same level as the Tim Cook documentary, but we made a similar feeling video for the Apple Watch and like how that mm -hmm. started in the project. Like, even though it wasn't the de facto like fitness device when it launched, being the Apple Watch, that was always the plan. Mm -hmm. Like, we covered their 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 planning process from 2010 2011 onwards for Apple Watch, and that was always their their desire for the Apple Watch. Yeah, it was it's Johnny what they saw that saw the Apple Watch becoming. Johnny kind of pushed it towards the fashion side of things a little bit yeah. more than it needed, I think. Yeah. So for Vision Pro, I just I wish it would leak or someone what it, what do they see this being? Cuz it, it right now it genuinely feels like it's up in the air to everybody. And I would like to know what they see this being in 10 years. Like, I would hate to hear that they don't have a plan at all. And it is up to developers and, like, the general public to decide. I think they've, I think they've thrown out a bunch of, it could be this. It could be this. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's a whole bunch of that. I think the productivity thing is probably what they're focusing on first. And that's because Apple users tend to be productivity focused. C certainly yeah, Mac and users. That's, what's, that's also what's easiest for them to pull off. Yeah. Um, Having the new interface and being controller free, I think is a really good thing. There's a few people that have been commenting in my videos saying, if it doesn't even come with controllers, why would I get it? You can't game on it. That Yeah, I'm that's like, a naive. That's, that's because yeah. you, you're a Windows user, isn't it? Um, yeah, well, that's how, that, but that's how crazy it is. Mm -hmm. Like, that's how crazy eye tracking sounds to someone and like gesture tracking. It sounds so insane that they're like, well, if it doesn't have a controller, it doesn't make sense. I don't want yeah. it. You know who hasn't said that? 
anyone that's Who had the demos. Oh yeah, nobody has said that. <laughs> like, oh man, you know what? It's if it just had maybe just one controller. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there there will be like the they've said you can use it with a keyboard if you want to type on it. But who's going to put uh-huh. this on to write a book? That's not what it's for. Yeah, like there's like that that feeling. You know, I'm only we're only ever going to feel this once mm-hmm. when we put it on and it does track our eyes for the first time. I'm like chills. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a connection to technology that we haven't had before. Uh, but then, uh, what? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's my worry. I mean, I've I've definitely heard about some productivity apps that haven't been um, sort of put out there publicly that mm. do exist for Vision Pro, which uh, I'll I'll Is message you. Okay, <laughs> a little bit later. <laughs> okay, um, sounds good. Uh, which I've I've <laughs> I know of people that have had demoed, so that's that's really interesting. Uh-huh. Uh, I do think it's going to be rolling out sooner than later to other countries. Mm-hmm. I'm still stunned that it didn't come with M3 inside. I I was genuinely thinking I was on the I was on board with mm-hmm. you with that. That by the time it comes out, of course, M3 is going to be in it. So yeah. when when we finally got like the final specs and stuff, I was like, ooh. Yeah, when they put out the original, you know, Mac Mini for Apple Silicon, it was an A12Z, which is basically mm-hmm. the M0. Um, we got M1 announced with it. It was like, yeah, of course they're they're putting this out. This is the developer kit basically, and then they'll go. Yeah. And now it's with M3 as well, and it's got yeah. ray tracing and it's got all of that stuff. And I was like, obviously, but yeah. I can't imagine yeah. that this version. I was I was a hundred percent on board with you there. It can't it can't stay for that long. Yeah. And if it's going to be this higher price, they can't just keep it around at an M2 for very long. Right. So. I I think maybe by what what we think in like the end of this year, like before Christmas, maybe we'll have an M3 I mean, version. I don't know. Like we might be waiting for the next. I mean, the next one probably won't even. Ha- we'll probably go straight to M4 by the time that one's ready. But it's Possible. it's just it, what whatever they have. They built this with M2 in mind, obviously, and it must do just enough with M2 that they're happy with it and wasn't worth like going back and. Uh, not reverse engineering it, but like you know, having to retool and stuff to get M3 in there, and I, we don't actually know when they started making units, yeah. so I don't. Know. I mean, maybe the intent was actually to have it out sooner after Dub Dub. It sounds like it was supposed to, like this was supposed to happen sooner than expect than we're actually getting. Like it wasn't mm-hmm. supposed to be, which could it also explain why things feel weird, mm-hmm. like why there was no secondary event because maybe they never planned a secondary event. Maybe this was supposed to be done a while ago. But then even at Dub Dub they were saying like l- early twenty twenty four, right? But mm-hmm. we kept hearing like you know spring was when they were going to unveil it last year and then it was dub dub and then it was like yeah it was supposed to be out at dub yeah. dub and then yeah the gasps when uh, when the price was revealed are still like that that's insane that we have been covering this since like 2018 yeah and and originally we were thinking it was going to be apple glasses in the first place yeah at like 500 yeah. bucks yeah heavily relying on your iphone mm-hmm. we got exactly the opposite of that <laughs> Yeah, yeah. May, but when you look back, bro, Google Glass was so ahead of its time. It really was. It really got a bad rap. Yeah, and I think it needed to for stuff like this to then have its chance later on. Yeah, and the idea of having the recording indicators in the eyesight area, I uh-huh. I still also maintain it should have been called the iPod. Like it just makes much more sense as a name. Yeah. It's much cooler than Vision Pro. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> but E Y E pod. Yeah. Oh, so good. I well, I feel like like Craig could have come out on stage and announced that before they said Vision Pro as like yeah. a Mac OS weed <laughs> yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> when do you see Tim being done? Uh, it, my opinions changed this week because of the delays with okay. Apple Car. So I thought he was going to see okay. that through into 2026. I don't see him still being there in 2028. Yeah, that's a tough one. Mm. Yeah, I, I I think it's a fair assumption that he's out in 2026. Um, it it just depends. Like, if this, it depends on if Apple Car needs Tim Cook. Mm-hmm. Like, there's a certain legitimacy and credibility that comes with Tim Cook announcing a product that maybe a newer CEO, we wouldn't want to put on a new a new CEO ten, two years into his tenure. Mm-hmm. Maybe he's not ready for that. I don't know. I mean, it took it took a while for people to get on board with Tim. It, it took a while for Tim to find himself. So. Yeah. 
What if, Depends. rather than Tim Cook disappearing completely, he takes a step back and mm. coordinates the operations for the car launch? I'd be curious to see if Tim's even capable of that. Tim feels like he's either all in or all out. Maybe. But I also... I. I Definitely still think there's a non zero chance that he runs for president someday. Oh, yeah, I would see that. Yeah. Yeah. Because mm. the way that he's changed Apple to being a lot more kind of focused on um, good for the world in general, uh -huh. obviously controversial in some aspects, um, but I think the change that he's been able to see what he's done with Apple, like yeah. it's tenfold if he decides to run for hmm. office and and i think he would probably win it every every time an election comes up now i'm gonna be like is it is it, is mm -hmm. it now is it happening now and here's here's my hot take on it as well and this is this is going to be the interesting one because obviously okay. america is very split between left and right yeah something like that the right sees itself as being the most patriotic right and the uh, most yeah. business focused when you get the man who has run the world's biggest company as an American company and not been bankrupt multiple times, <laughs> like that splits the I want to make other people's lives worse <laughs> from the uh -huh. actual patriotism, I think. Yeah. And I think that's a really interesting question for what happens to America then. But there's no there's no winning there for Tim. It's like even if he run the the right will never see it as he runs an American company. As far as the right is concerned, it's going to be you know everything's outsourced to China. Mm -hmm. You don't really count as an American but he's, company. But he's getting China to make money for America. He is doing that, but that's not how the like that's I. But that's how it should be pitched. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it should. It should I, w I wish there was more common sense here, but there's. <laughs> oh, God. It's such a mess. Just bring back Bernie. <laughs> yeah, Bernie. Is, how, is he even alive? I still? think so. He's just gone quiet. Dust him off. He's still yeah, got the we'll blanket on his off. knees. <laughs> and we've come yeah. full circle. <laughs> yeah, you need to. By the way, you need to set your reminder uh, for ten, 10 years from now to like check for blankets make sure you have enough to see if we were right absolutely no i'm yeah yeah well i think your your new visual will be maybe a rocking chair in that studio okay. that you had for <laughs> for the last documentary that was nice yeah but, uh -huh. you know maybe a on the porch chair, yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> like with one, like a wheat yeah what is that what what you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah the straw like a, in the a, mouth. yeah a, a blade of grass kind of thing yeah i know uh doing. So you've been watching Front Page Tech for that long. When did I finally find you? Pretty quickly after I started. Like, I think I started doing the Daily Shows June of 2020. And I think it was probably... Have I like been watching you for that long? About September. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, it's been a few years. That's it was Time isn't pre, real. Pre-Apple Silicon. Yeah, time is not... Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Because mm -hmm. I I watched you for a lot of Apple Silicon content. Because I was saying right from the start that I think Apple Silicon is going to go to a very much annual upgrade cycle, and it looks like they're mm -hmm. getting a lot closer to that now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Vadim. One of my favorite things that has happened lately. Yeah, Vadim is my main nemesis on that. He's like, nope, eighteen months, eighteen <laughs> months, eighteen months, and I'm like, just oh. wait, Vadim. I met Vadim too at CES. He was he's, on the show he's a really fun guy. Like we chat a lot on yeah. Twitter, but I, I tease Max him on that. And their all the editor time. Ben, <laughs> Ben's really cool too. Yeah. What we, we have like, uh, okay, are you going to go to CES next year? If I can afford it, like it's it's a lot more expensive to go transatlantic than internal. <laughs> but also, you it's it's kind of a cheat code because like everybody wants tech people to be there, so True. it's like any company would pay you to come there. If I if I get everything up and running and and, and a bit more growth because we've started coming back up again like i had a bit of a plateau stopped kind of really we got to have a talk we got to have a chat privately because oh, okay. you the, yeah you limit yourself a lot i'm sure <laughs> like like right now a company would pay you a very decent amount of money to show up at ces okay i'd be down for that but you got to be willing to like entertain that you got to walk in the room knowing that they're going to pay you you know what mm -hmm. i mean 
I feel like uh, CES is going to be, I probably won't attend CES, but I think I will go and I will be in the area every year. Like I enjoyed yeah. that just sort of being around uh, friends and stuff. And uh, it's, it's definitely a different experience that I have the privilege of being able to do later in my career. Cause like I couldn't, if I just showed up at CES, but didn't actually go to CES years prior, no one would have, no one would have cared, but it's like now, you know, I have friends in the, in the area and that's sort of where everyone's, congregated mm -hmm. in one location so to just it, i at this point in my career i can just show up and like attend the extra stuff the extracurricular yeah. activities happening outside of ces because no, i definitely so uh, i still need to do the you should go to ces and run into me yeah 100 percent. Well, i mean i still need to do the like cupertino pilgrimage go to the shop uh buy all the t-shirts because at the minute i have to buy yeah. the like x apple store employee ones like that's all i can get with a uh -huh. with a logo on properly um yeah or, or my own merch you know, the little Cupertino stuff. <laughs> I love that your merch doesn't look like merch. Yeah, it's just like, I, I try to make it look more like, I, I didn't want like, I Cave Dave written across the front. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But this, this is falling apart now. I've had this for oh, is a it? few years. You can't tell. Mm, are you sure? It's all together with, with what? Thoughts and prayers? Mainly. Or what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> chewing oh, gum. Oh, man. Yeah, Elmer's glue and chewed up bubble gum. <laughs> Absolutely, cool man. All right, should we wrap it? Well, I, I if if you want to wrap it, if you got any more, I can keep going. If you want to wrap it, we can wrap it. It's up to you. You're the you're the boss. You know what we're gonna do? We're gonna wrap it because it's always better to okay, leave them wanting it. more. I should just, uh, yeah, we'll just leave them wanting more and get them ready for when you're the co-host of Genius. Absolutely. Bar. I mean, <laughs> when when Sam has pushed me too far, it's okay. We can we can arrange for it. I can get some lava lamps sent over right now. <laughs> okay, okay, perfect. It can be arranged. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, and uh, yeah, I appreciate your time and giving me the space to come on the show. Thank you very much. And you can find John all over the internet at FTP. FPT, FPT, FTP, how dare all you? of those things. How dare you? How dare we were you? friends. Don't it was going up, so though. well. I'd rather not. It was not. going so well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> About that genius bar spot. John <laughs> underscore uh, Prosser. It's, it's, it's down there. Yep. You can see it. It's been on the screen the whole I time. I recommend not finding me elsewhere, though. <laughs> just watch at the genius bar. <laughs> It's all good. Yeah, just only just only tune in when I show up here, and that's all you need to see of me. That's and all. if uh, if you want to get John back on, drop some questions in the comments, and then we'll force him to come back on and answer them. We'll do IK answers live. I with love John. it, but for me, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Awesome, thanks, John. A complete revolution. We figured out a way. machine all of the surfaces to create something that's that's genuinely new. You have to to start again. Unapologetically plastic. Aluminium. Is that it? Did we do it? We did it. We made it to the end. We did it. We, we did made it. a show. Yeah.